The fact is that the bills that the president, that the, excuse me, the future president here, that, that, that the senator is talking about. Well, first of all, I'm grateful that he endorsed my presidency already. That was Senator Cory Booker responding to Joe Biden's slip of the tongue last night. And Democratic Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey joins us now. Congratulations on a good performance last night and thanks for being on this morning. Thank you for having me, Mika. Good morning to you. So the New York Times said you were the best in class. Best in that class. That is uh, that is something Not that bad. no one ever said about me, especially during my days in school. Uh, how, uh, <laughs> how does that feel this morning, and how do you think the debate went? Well, it's it's a very hard format, as you know. Uh, two nights, uh, twenty people, ten on a stage. Um, but look, I'm I'm hopeful that emerging out of this, as I heard you all say earlier, is that by the time we get to September, it'll be a smaller debate sp stage. Uh, as, uh, we're still very far out. Um, but look, I'm still introducing myself, and I felt like it was a great opportunity last night to try to show my heart as well as my head. And I'm hopeful that with uh, still a long time to go, uh, that we'll get the chance to have more people to understand what I'm about. So there were um, many uh, criticisms of the, the debate last night, Democratic debate, uh, about the attacks against Barack Obama's policies. I certainly talked about it on Twitter last night, some, as did a lot of other Democrats. Uh, just curious, uh, do you think for uh, a guy who has a 97 percent approval rating in the Democratic Party, it made sense for somebody on the stage to be attacking the Affordable Care Act and uh, your attacks uh, against his immigration policy. Well, look, at the end of the day, you're right. Uh, President Obama is the statesman of our party and has the highest approval ratings. Uh, but I don't think that uh, any administration, as you and I both know who've been in public life, uh, nothing's without criticism. And there are some really substantive issues to discuss. Our immigration system is savagely broken. There are so many things happening that just aren't common sense. And uh, during the Obama administration, there were a lot of deportations. So I think having a substantive this conversation about that uh, isn't distracting from a great administration before. It's really trying to give a picture of what we want in the future. But again, I tried to go back time and time again last night on multiple occasions uh, for us to keep our eyes on the prize, which is unifying as a party uh, and being able to beat Donald Trump and then do it in a way that doesn't uh, further divide this country. In fact, I think the way to beat Donald Trump is by trying to say, hey, we're trying to beat Republicans. I think the Democratic Party has to be about uniting Americans, that we can't just talk about what we're against. We've got to give a compelling vision, uh, not that only can unite our party, but can really speak to independents and Republicans themselves. And immigration is that area. Uh, you guys are fans of Michael Bennett, and so am I. He showed in the Gang of Eight uh, that there is actually a bipartisan way. We got a bill through the Senate right before I got there. There's a lot of bipartisan space on this. The problem is we have a president in office that's engaging in such moral vandalism at the border, doing things that belie yes. common sense and actually make us less safe as a country. So that's what I'm trying to get everybody to refocus on is what we have right now is so objectionable, so unnecessary uh, that there's a lot of room here for us to appeal to moderates, independents and frankly, even Republicans uh, on immigration and other right. issues. So, uh, Senator, by, by the way, just a, a clarification, we've also been fans of your performances of late. Uh, we think you're running a, a very good, very disciplined, very tough campaign. Wanted to ask you, though, uh, more specifically on immigration, just so you get a chance to put it out there. Uh, what, what are your views on Barack Obama's immigration policy, on his deportation policy? I know there are a lot of swing state senators that love talking about how illegal immigration to the United States dropped to 50-year lows under Barack Obama and actually have skyrocketed under Donald Trump. I think that would be something that Democrats would want to get out there in the 2020 race against Donald Trump. What, what, what do you think? Well, look, I, I was a mayor during that time, as you know, and um, actually had to run stuff and had to try to keep uh, a city and a community safe. Um, and there were a lot of policies, like the 287G policy, uh, that we had to put out an announcement that, hey, my local law enforcement officials should not be involved and should not be federalized uh, to help with it. Uh, and the reason why, and I want folks to know this, is for safety. Uh, you know, right now we're seeing cooperation in cities all across America between immigrant communities and law enforcement really just being butchered. 
Uh, I sat with uh, a 14-year-old who was talking about uh, her friend that was assaulted, not wanting to call authorities because they were worried that their undocumented parents might have to come in and they would be deported. Uh, I have situations now in the city in which I live where uh, there are folks that don't cooperate with the police to report crimes because they're afraid, again, of being deported. So we have to have sensible policies that affirm our shared values. Safety and security have to be paramount. Uh, and But right now, the way some of the things were happening in the Obama administration, you threaten to tear apart families. There are uh, people being deported right now that have American spouse, American children. That doesn't make us stronger. That doesn't make us better. So we should be smart about how we do immigration, keep safety and security uh, really centered to what we're thinking about, but also human rights and what's best for our economy and what's best uh, for American families. Hey, Cor hey, Corey, it's John Heilman here. Um, I want to ask you about crime uh, and the exchanges you had last night with, uh, with Vice, President, Vice President Biden on that topic. I know it's something you care a lot about, and it's something you were kind of winding up to all of last week leading up to, to this night. You basically uh, are saying, hey, you know, that the Vice President has not really taken full responsibility for the policies uh, embodied by the 1994 crime bill, and more importantly, for the, for, the, for the consequences of it, that this is not a thing, from your point of view, uh, that, as the vice president says, well, that's a long time ago. You made the point on stage last night, the impact of this on communities of color is still very intense right now. So my question for you today, um, so my question for you is, do you feel like you have satisfaction on that question, or there is still more to litigate between you and Joe Biden over the question of, of, of criminal justice and its impact on the African-American community across the country? Hey, John, I, I'm glad for the wind up in that question, because I just want folks to know I'm not looking to sucker punch the vice president. I, I'm not a hard guy to figure out. If you know me, you know, uh, heck, since I was in college, I was writing, you know, college articles about this issue of mass incarceration. Uh, yeah. And especially then as a young black man, I was seeing stunning things happen, like folks getting locked up uh, in communities like Newark uh, for doing things that people in college were doing openly and without fear whatsoever. We have a savagely broken criminal justice system, as you said. That's not 20, 30 years ago. There are people in jail right now, unjustly, uh, for the kind of laws that the vice president has bragged about having his name on and obviously leading. So uh, I don't I, look if the vice president ends up being our nominee, God, especially in communities like Detroit, where I am, he, he's going to have to own up to what he did then. And he did it with the Iraq war last night. He said, I made a mistake uh, and, and was just very direct about that. But these are the kind of things with three strikes laws and these incredibly long sentences. But during the time I was in law school and the time I was mayor of the city of Newark, as our infrastructure was crumbling, we were a nation that was building a new jail or prison every 10 days in America to increase our prison population 500 percent. Overwhelmingly, the poor, the addicted, the mentally ill and black and brown people. So, no, I, I don't think he's had the courage to look the American public in the eye and said this was wildly wrong. It cost us billions of dollars. It, it chewed up human potential. It didn't lift people up. We were locking unnecessarily folks up. And if you want to appeal to communities like mine where I live or communities like this in Detroit, in a state where we lost by not having the kind of African-American turnout we, we, we should have had, God, we got to have leaders that can stand up and speak to the past, to the problem of mass incarceration now, and show a bold vision uh, to put us in line with other developed nations in terms of things like incarceration. Senator, it's Jonathan Lemire. Last discussion about the vice president and his, and his record reflective of his status currently as the front runner and that's in part because his position in the polls are, are so strong on the backs of his support among African American voters why sir do you think you have not caught on with African American voters up in fact I'm the only person I think in the Senate in this race who uh, spent most of his career representing majority black communities and uh, very proud of that well, look, this is early in the race. Joe Biden has 99 percent name recognition. Uh, as much as my uh, ego would like to think differently, when I started this race, I had about 50 percent name recognition. Remember, Barack Obama was trailing Hillary Clinton and amongst African-American voters until until really until he beat uh, her in Iowa. So we are still very far out. There's, this is still uh, as, a, as a former uh, football player out in the Pac-10. Uh, this is not even uh, preseason yet. We're still in August double days right now. Uh, this is really early in the race. And for those folks who have watched past races, we have never had a president uh, from our party, somebody to go on and win the presidency, that was leading in the polls this far out. Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Jimmy Carter, all 
considered long shots at this moment. In fact, the only people we've had to go on and win the presidency who led this far out, uh, to, not to win the presidency, frankly, to be nominated for the presidency were people that didn't win, uh, like Mondell, like Gore, even though he won the popular vote, and Secretary mm -hmm. Clinton, even though once she won the popular vote. So I'm not worried about the polls right now. Uh, what I'm worried about is what often doesn't get talked about, but the Des Moines Register seems to notice it. A lot of local media is that on the ground in early states, we, maybe Elizabeth Warren competing with us, uh, two of the best campaigns that have organizations on the ground. I'm in the top three in endorsements in, in, those, in those early states like Iowa and New Hampshire. We're doing exceptionally well in the things that mattered and the things that enabled people like John Kerry, who are polling at 4%, to win Iowa because of the organization. So on the metrics that matter this far out, exceedingly well. And I'm hoping after performances like last night uh, that folks are going to discover who I am. We were one of the top Google candidates for the second debate in the row. People just saying, hey, who is that guy? I hope that more people will go to CoreyBooker.com and help us to continue to stay on the platform and basically get to next year when the voting happens in a position to strike and win in Iowa. CoreyBooker.com. Senator Cory Booker, thank you very thank you. much. Come back. Great to have you on.